Our portion in our walk with God is always about blessing. Tell somebody it's about blessing. Therefore, we should continue to do what it takes to guarantee those blessings. You see, the I know my right attitude diminishes the attitude of gratitude. And it has worked in a lot of us our lives. A lot of you who drive will agree with me. Sometimes you stop at the, at the, at the, at the crossing, at the zebra crossing. And somebody just walk past and he doesn't even care. He doesn't even say thank you. Because he knows he's right. But you have others who pass. And they will say, they might not say from there, but they give you a gesture of thanks. Thank you. Even though it's their right. But they still say thank you. Some of us, the attitude we have at work, when we get our salary, we can't even say thank you. Because it's our right. And unfortunately, we have taken our normal right into the church. Because the attitude you have is that, well, I work for it, so if you're giving me my money, it's my money, I don't need to say thank you to you. Obvious things carry gratitude, even though it might be your right. And the thing is that without you learning and conscientizing yourself, to always express and let the spirit of gratitude work in you, you will lack in life. So in the next few weeks, as we get into this today, because it's Father's Day, I might contextualize it on the point of being a father. But as we go on, I want to show you certain scriptures that will, in my opinion, amaze you about how our lives must be full of gratitude and we work in the spirit of gratitude in order to see God do great things in our lives. To assess God's promise fully, we must understand the different keys to the different blessings uh, 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 and use them wisely. To understand God fully and assess his blessings, we must understand the different keys. Brothers and sisters, we don't have the master key in the kingdom. Let me give you the scripture and then we can explain it. Uh, Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He said, I will give you the keys. Not the key. I will give you the wash of me. Keys, plural. In other words, there's no particular key to the kingdom. There are keys. And depending on what room you want to open, you choose a particular key. A lot of times we think that there is only one key for everything and we fail at that. This is a massive building as you know. There are lots of rooms here. If you want a place to, to seek God quiet and pray, the key that opens to the auditorium is what you need. If you need to get some money, the key that opens to where? The finance office is what you look for. If you want to see Pastor Shadrach at office hours, it's the key that what opens to what? His office. And if you try to use the key that opens to his office, to the auditorium, you will not be able to enter. Let me work it for you. And sometimes we feel that one key opens everything. But let me tell you something, that God gives us a clear mandate that in my father's house, if I let's read it, John 14, 2 to 7. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. It's, it's interesting because when you read it, when you read the original, it says that in my father's house are many mansions. It doesn't make sense, does it? In my father's house are many mansions. Then it says that I'm going to prepare. How long does it take to prepare? When God used only six days to build the whole earth and the universe. Does it need two years for just a mansion? But what does it mean to have a mansion in a house? And several mansions for that matter. 
So when you study scriptures and you come to things like that, you have to pause. Because there's a deeper revelation in it that you see on the surface. He's talking to you about keys. He said, I give you keys to the kingdom. Because in every mansion, have a different key that opens it. Let me give you a typical example. For the fulfillment of prophecy, you don't need prayer. The key is loyalty and covenant. The key, so, 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 prophecies are come to you and you are praying, but no, you are not loyal, you are not a covenant person. It will not come to pass. Because it's not prayer that unlocks it. It is loyalty that is the key. It is loyalty and covenant. You are not a covenant person, we can't trust you. You say I will be there, you are not there. And you expect prophecies to come to pass. The unction that rests upon the prophet. If you want that unction, it is not prayer. You give me a cup of cold water. The Bible says. They say what? You give a cup of cold water to the prophet. And you receive what? The prophet's reward. So there is a key that opens that. Hallelujah. Let me give you some more. Breaking bondage. You don't smile. It's prayer. Prayer is the key. So you are sitting there and then, and then having very beautiful English language with the devil. Devil, devil, I don't like what you're doing. Please, will you leave me alone? Myself and my family, I have enough of you, please. You think he understands that language? In the name of Jesus, please leave I really don't like what you're doing. He doesn't understand that language. There is a key that breaks that. Longevity in life. Long life. It is not prayer. So bondage you need prayer as a key. Longevity is not prayer. It says honor your father and your mother. Amen. That your days may be what? So you need a different key. So you may be praying all day, all night, and you don't honor your father, you don't honor your mother, you insult your father, you fight. I have a friend, he beats his father. Very intelligent boy. We grew up together in the same area. Sometimes his father will come and call me and say, talk to your man. He locks his father up because his father married another woman and he was fighting his mother's battle and he would beat his father. I mean, usually it is the fathers that beat the children. He changed the order. He's dead now. I went ahead of his death. I was so sad. Brilliant guy. I mean, we went to proper school. We didn't go to uh, junior secondary school and senior secondary school. We went to proper O level and proper A level. That is when school was school. From class, from, from one to from five. And then you break, then you go to lower six and upper six. That is when school was school. No juniors. Those who go to junior secondary school and they said, I go help you. And then our grades were marked one, two, three, four, and stuff. He got everything one, 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 English nine. What do you call it? Automatic three. He was broken. When we we're going to write all level, levels, the guy had read through a particular physics book we use. We call it Abbott. How many people know Abbott? Those who don't know, you need deliverance. Hey, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. But seriously, he's read through the book 16 times. You're going to sit in the same classroom with this boy. 16 times he's read Abbott. And Abbott is about as thick like this. Dishonored his father. Could not make it. He had, he had nine. And nine means that you, you failed until you rewrite the English. He was so devastated, he became a carpenter. Listen to me. The key to longevity is honor your father and your mother. The key to overflow, some of you may not like this one, is tithe and offering and obedience. The key to overflow. I know people I've prayed with and for years, but they can't get overflow because they don't give. They are stingy. And they think prayer will work. No. Prayer opens different doors. Overflow works different doors. You must know the key you use. Hallelujah. You may say to your children, the children will all go home, go and leave home, you still have lack. 
You may say, it's the economy you live in. There are other people that live in the same economy that they are making it. Because you refuse to use the right key. The key that opens the auditorium is not the same key that opens my office. So you've got to know what key you use. Spiritual overflow and enlightenment, the key is obedience and gratitude. Bible says that eat the good of the land. What is the key? It's if you are willing and what? Obedient. Glory to Jesus. The beatitudes. He will say that blessed are those that he gives you. So this key opens this attitude. That key opens that attitude and so on and so forth. Please note, just as in life, you can't use a wrong key to open a door, so also in the spiritual, you you can't do that unless it's designed for that door by God. So if I want longevity in my life, I need to locate all the fathers in my life. I need to locate the mothers in my life. And I need to honor them. Honor my father and my mother. That will bring me increase. So now he's telling us in the text, and I'm going to develop this in a few minutes and then we'll take on some specifics. My father's house has many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The truth of the matter is that he is not going to prepare and build any house because God is not business of building houses. And as a matter of fact, how many years does he need to build? He spoke everything you have in being. He doesn't have bulldozers and combined harvesters and, 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 and uh, earth-moving equipment. He just has to speak it. When you study the test, it's deeper than that. It is a spiritual, is it a spiritual or physical room? Or a concept of blessings as God doesn't need years to build a house. In his response to Thomas, you see clearly in the text, he wasn't talking about room, but a concept of access to God's blessings through his son Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you see, the importance and significance of uh, gratitude or the thanksgiving that he puts in place for us to be able to walk in is this. Now in the life of the Jews, and I said that last two Sundays, there are, there are several, there are several, what's it called again? Several uh, feasts that used to be. But there are three that is on God's heart that Jesus paid particular attention to. The first is the feast of Thanksgiving or Sukkot or Tabernacle. The second is the Passover. And the third is the feast of Pentecost. So Jesus Christ rode on the donkey and entered Jerusalem, we call it the triumphant entry. And the first that he fulfilled was the Feast of Tabernacle. In the Feast of Tabernacle, people bring offerings. Glory to God, it's for your own blessing. Amen. Don't run from church because it's offering. It's important that you learn to challenge God in obedience. And, 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 and he went to the temple, and you and I know, we talked about it, and for those who know here, let me just take a minute to, to, to address it. And then he saw this woman give this offering, and, and others were bringing their Thanksgiving offering and everything else, and he commended the woman. He highly commended the woman. And, and, and me being, I'm a very, sometimes I can be a moralist, I admit that. If I was that, and I've done it in the past, I would not even get poor people to give, because obviously, then God rebuked me on that. The same thing, Jesus looks at the woman and said that, take I mean, uh, you've done the best. I would say said that the money he put in was only worth enough to buy bread. It's about one pound to one dollar to five dollars or three pounds there about. That's all she had. And Jesus let the woman put the money in to go and die. But I believe that the story was continued. He got blessed. She got blessed. And others who had, they moved from there. He had to address the crowd. And it says that I am the water of life. If you test, you come to me, I give you water. And he says, out of your bellies are rivers of water, living water flow. What did he say? What did he mean by that, saying that? Then he said another two, another second thing, powerful thing. He said, I'm the light of the world. And you're going to understand the concept, and God willing, next week we'll be looking at it in detail. But then the next one is the Passover. And the Passover has been done. The next is the Pentecost. The Pentecost has been there. Now we are living in Pentecost. But it is a thanksgiving that he instituted that it must continue. Because gratitude is the basis of our work with him. 
And you as a human being, you know when you have done things for people and they can't say thank you, you get angry. You don't want to help them ever again. God is the same. Gratitude is very, 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 very important. So brothers and sisters, it is one of the three most important of the Jewish festivals. And two of them have been discontinued or it's been fulfilled, as I told you. But the tabernacles remain because God wants us to be appreciative. Even though this series is about gratitude, as I said earlier, I just want to contextualize it for Father's Day because today happens to be Father's Day. So if you have a father, be it a father in the Lord like myself, be it a biological father, or a father that raised you, today you must honor the person. Because number one, heritage is of fathers. Heritage is of fathers. Don't ever miss that revelation. Number two, longevity is of fathers. Honor your father and your mother that your days will be long. Hallelujah. Number three, prosperity is of fathers. It says, believe in God and believe also in the servants. And you will what? Uh, prosper. It's our fathers. And so you must be able to get that revelation very clearly. Those of us who don't have good relationship with our fathers, I implore you to change your attitude. In fact, some of you know my testimony, but for the sake of those who don't permit me to use my own private life to, to encourage somebody. I'm that person that really loved my father very much. And um, at some point, we, we broke, we grew apart. The reason that we did that was because when my, father, my mother died, I blamed him for my mother's death. It was very painful for me. When my, I was I traveled, I was a student studying in Europe, and I heard my mother died. What happened to her? Complications. But the sad thing is that he went to visit my mother with his girlfriend. And the woman was lying down, and unfortunately, where he was lying on his hospital bed, he could see from the window that he was coming with his girlfriend. And brothers and sisters, she got up and went to the bathroom. So the nurses were waiting on her to tell her that your husband is here to visit you. They waited and waited and waited and waited. The woman didn't come out. So they decided, let us go and check in the bathroom. Very strange death. They went to the bathroom. She was sitting at the edge of the bath. When you die like that, you fall down. She was sitting at the edge. She was chewing this girl people's... Uh, sponge and it fell off in his hand and with a head like this the woman was dead and i said what i started a process of changing my surname i will not call my father every year i'll go down i'll send her presents i'll do i stop everything one day as i was praying the lord said to me call your father ask his forgiveness I'm like, no, he must ask my forgiveness. I'm believing I'm helping somebody with this story. He must ask my forgiveness. Because, you know, some of you don't know these things, but where I come from, it's okay then, sometimes even now, to have multiple wives or women. <laughs> no, the person said amen for his mother and his father, not for himself. <laughs> said do that and it was very tough for me but then I resisted catch a long story short then I heard the Lord say to me that if you don't forgive him you will do worse things than your father did that got me I got afraid because I've only known one woman I don't want a situation where I'll be changing women because everybody who is into womanizing look at their end it never ends well for them Oh, it's true. You may, you may enjoy it. And you just change. They'll keep changing the women. Women are very interesting beings. <laughs> very interesting beings. They have the power to prosper you. And they have the power to bring you down. Have one of them, or maybe two, you'll be okay. But five forces, hey! Somebody scream one. I agree with you. <laughs> Glory to God. 
seriously cut a long story short i flew i went i gave him money I, I gave him a chief. You know, for those who come from Africa, chiefs, they like their sheep and things like that. I did all that. And he blessed me. Then he was going out with some young girl who is, who is younger than some of my senior brothers. So they hated the girl. They, they, told, her, they told him that looks him, if you're going to have somebody, to have somebody who's good at that, because this small girl, we can't call her mother. We can't call her mother. So I call all my brothers. I said, Charlie, guys, how many years has the old man got? So now I become so close to him that now I'm fighting his corner. I call my guys. I said, look, how many, allow the man to have his life. Let him enjoy himself. And they, they respect me. So I'm the pastor among them. I said, okay, we will allow. And then he said to me, call me. What I did? You've done well. Now can you tell the girl that now everything is sorted? So... <laughs> he blessed me and I know that my life never became the same because I forgave some of you are holding your fathers your mothers in your heart some of you have determined that because he didn't look after you may I shock you God didn't give you conditions of love he said to you that love your mother and your father period whether they cared for you they didn't care for you whether they stole from you, they didn't steal from you. Whether they looked after you, whether they impregnated your mother and they ran away or whatever. It is none of your business. Your place is to honor them. But listen to me, the word honor is not what we do in English language. It's not when we see somebody, please, yes sir, please. That is not that. Honor is to financially take care of. Honor has nothing to do with the way you greet it has nothing to do with the way you speak. With all due respect, sometimes the English translations mislead us because of the current English language we use. But the word honor, that's what the Bible says, that the elder that rules well deserves double honor. It means double pay. So that word honor, it says honor your father and your mother, is the same thing. Some of us, our parents are living in some ramshackle places and we've built ourselves mansions. Shame on you. Hallelujah. Build your father a house. Build your mother a house. And if you cannot build them a house or build them a, a decent, let them live in your mansion and take care of them till they die. That is a blessing. I thought you would clap harder. Glory to Jesus. That is honor. Honor is not the way you greet a person. Honor is not the way you show some from full respect. Hello, Bawonio, Adiachio, Utrisuo, Apampasuo. But that is not the honor the Bible is talking about. That honor is making sure that your parents are set up. When they are sick and they don't have, and you have especially, you take care of them. Glory to God. There is an offering you give to your father, biological. And there's an offering you give to your spiritual father. You don't give your, your, your spiritual father so much money and stuff. When your parents who gave back to you, you don't take care of. It's an abomination. I repeat, it's an abomination. When did you know the pastor? You've known him for only five years, ten years. This person who gave back to you, took you to school, suffered, paid, did everything. May I tell you that the pastor may be having 1,000 members, and if something happened to you, he may pray for you, but the prayer will not be as deep as your mother who's living somewhere in Abiyakuta, who's feeling from the belly that God help my daughter, so it will be well with my daughter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father's Day, show gratitude. You see, it's interesting that a lot of times uh, 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 we use excuses that, that, that my father didn't take care of me, that my father didn't do this. I've seen footballers who didn't take care of their fathers when they became rich and their, their, their career didn't live long. I have seen prominent people who abused their fathers because now you are rich, your father is your servant. Let me start concluding. There are three things we need to understand on Father's Day in showing our gratitude. First, show gratitude to your father not because he has a need. Not because he has a need. Fortunately, a lot of us come from families where our fathers are very rich. 
They left inheritance. They left stuff. So they don't need our money. They don't need anything from us. But still, you've got to show kindness and gratitude. He could have aborted you. He could have put pressure on your mother, take that child out. He could have walked away. It's not your right. Hallelujah. He could have taken you to some school that doesn't have address. <laughs> Glory to God. Now you can boast of good schools. They tell you, I've got a bachelor's from Oxford. I've got a so-and-so from Princeton. I've got a so-and-so from Harvard. I just graduated from so-and-so. And you feel good about it because somebody so-and-so paid through his so-and-so nose. <laughs> Glory to God. And it's not your right. Hallelujah. Amen. He could have used that money on their concubine children. But he took care of you. And he gave you the best education. So anytime your silly lies on the uh, silly force on that table, it breathes. The 200 CVs that your CV says that this is where I am. Pick me. And they say, I'll pick you because of the accolades. The father you have because of the connections he has. He's connected to the queen. He's connected to the MP. He's connected to this. He's connected to that. So before even you graduated, your job is just prepared. You've got to bless God. Because your father is a prominent person, you don't have a problem marrying. Because everybody wants to marry you. It's part of the blessing. If you are born by some, some Tudu Maku from Tudu somewhere. Some Tanku <laughs> from somewhere. Come to say, I'm bringing my boyfriend to come and show you. What's the name of that Tanku? What? What oh, JJ man? If you don't get out of our face, Tanku. No, 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 no. We want some proper name. Glory to Jesus. Your father did a lot. So you bless him not because you have a need. First uh, 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 scripture on that, Philippians 4, 15 to 19. Moreover, as you, as you Philippians know, in the early days of the acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts, what I desire is that more be credited to your account. Hallelujah. Amen. It says that all these churches that are planted, that's the wickedness of the church. None of them came to help me. All the churches, it's a sad thing and it's an indictment. None of them came to help me. As a spiritual father, or as the father in the Lord, as an apostle, as a father God is giving you, you got to take care of. You know, sometimes, excuse my language, but when we talk like this, people think we're soliciting for things. You know, I, I, when the Lord put this message on my heart this morning, I was struggling a bit. The Lord said, it is not about you, it's about them. Go speak it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because as soon as you say, hey, this is, there's so much suspicion in the, in the world now, so much suspicion on social media. When a pastor talks about money or talks about any gifting, they say, hey. But they will not stop our mouth. We we'll teach the truth. He said, these churches did not communicate with me on giving and receiving, on blessing. He said, but the only church that did that was the church in Philippi. And unfortunately, there are churches that they will suck you dry. They will do everything to suck you dry, and when you are dry, they leave you. When you, they kill you, they find another church. But it, should not happen, it shouldn't happen in the body of Christ. He's saying that, what is this? When God has given you an apostle, you have to preserve the apostle. Anytime I preach on this text, there's a particular story that comes from mine. And permit me to tell you this story. Maybe you've heard it before. Forgive me, but it's always saddens my heart. Very wonderful man. Preaches is a one guy that, that cuts across everywhere. The Catholic, I mean, he was a Pentecostal, but he was accepted in all the main denominations. He preaches in America, all over the world. I don't know what happened to him. He was traveling to this particular country. Take an airplane. That's why sometimes we value money so much that we don't want to spend money. Sometimes stinginess can kill you. And he want to take a whole big man of God. He want to take one of those Peugeot cars that it takes about three front one in the distance. Because it's cheap. And they entered into the country. As soon as they entered into the country, straight away, um, I'm robbers. 
So thank God they didn't kill him. They took everything and don't only him but all the other passengers. And because his passport has British visa, American visa, Australian visa, and all those things in it, he went to beg or argue for the passport to be given back to him. Then they sprayed about three or four bullets into this part of his body. Listen to me. He was traveling by himself, a whole big man of God like that. They put him on a motorbike, Zokada, to some makeshift hospital, clinic. Finally, word reaches his church and elders that this is what has happened. They could not raise money to come and take care of the man. So finally, one week had gone past, and they have went to some money to get him on the plane. When they got on the plane, the plane uh, company said that they would have to collapse three seats in order to put that structure thing to be able to transport him. And you know what? They said they don't have the money to pay for the three seats. His life. They have the money to pay for the three seats. So they sat him down, holding the drip and everything. Flew him back to his home country, which is Ghana. Took him to one of the premier hospitals, which is 37. And the wounds were so infected that he eventually died. Wickedness. Wickedness in the church. Even if you don't have the money, can't you just call on an offering or call a what's it called, fundraising? Our pastor is now in this country going through this. Can we raise thousand dollars so that we can give him a proper uh, care or something? But they will say that honor you, pastor. You're my papa. You're my daddy. You're my daddy. You're my this. No, no, it's not the words you use. I hope I'm talking to somebody. It's not the words you use. This man died a needless death because the church, I call it wickedness. Hallelujah. What shall they profit a man? I'm sure in the church kitty there's money in there. I'm sure some accountant is sitting there saying that we can't spend such money. It's the people's money. It's this, it's that. But who raised the money? It is the work of God and his life is very important for the continuity of the work. But that is what happens. I'm going to shock you. Because when we talk about thanksgiving, it is different from English. As a matter of fact, the original sentence said two words made together. Thanks with giving. So you cannot really thank somebody without giving to the person. I'll say that again. You cannot thank somebody without giving it to the person. So now the society has said, give the person a card. He will eat the card. Will he eat the card? Thanksgiving is you. And funny enough, a lot of us come from African backgrounds, so let me just use the African. And with all humility, I've traveled almost, not almost, but quite a number of African countries. And I know the culture is almost the same because we are sort of homogeneous uh, 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 approach to our cultural anthropology. So I understand that. And almost everywhere you go, from Ghana to Nigeria to Kenya to South Africa, when you're going to an elderly person to thank an elderly person, you don't go empty-handed. When you're going to your oba, to the king or whatever, you come with shopping for what he did and you say, thank you, Baonio, and you say what you have to say. And you said that when we are coming, we brought a sheep. The sheep has been many times on the door. Or in other words, it has been tied to the door. When you come out, you see the sheep there. We brought some drinks. We brought some uh, uh, cola nuts. We brought some this and that. Not because the king has a word, a need. But every thank you comes with a giving. You don't just say thank you. Husband, you don't just look at your husband, wife and say thank you for last night. Thank you. No. If she made you go, you say thank you with something substance. Only five people heard that. Only 20 people heard that. It's only Pastor Shadda that can talk like that. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said, not because I have a need. Shall we say, not because I have a need? I don't have a need. But that word, it might be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. 
Listen to me. It says the offering was fragrant offering. I wish I had time to break these things down. Maybe next week we'll do it. Fragrant offering. He said the offering you bring, your father must be a fragrant offering. A fragrant offering is not tulale. Tulale is some kind of perfume that, that doesn't have address. And when you put it on you, even if you don't have B.O., instantly you get a B.O. Where B.O. is defined as body odor. Tulale. That is no fragrance. That fragrance we're talking about Givenchy. We're talking about a, a one million pack of Robin. We're talking about some, 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 some powerful stuff. When you put it on you, after a mile, you have a sludge. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fragrant offering. Amen. Let your father say, ah, you have lived in London for 20 years. You go home and you go to feed your father. You go to a, 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 a primer to go and shop for your father. You go to East Street. Go to Max's Spaces. Get, get that. You know, the, the, the old men, they like that white front boxer, uh, white front underwear. I don't know who wears them these days, but somehow the old people like it. Those Max and Spencer stuff. Get some for them. Hallelujah. Buy them something that when they wash, it will still stand. And they wash again, it will still stand. And they wash again, it will still stand. Not something when they wash, it goes, hey. <laughs> Fragrant offering. Hallelujah. Fragrant what? Offering. Amen. It says an acceptable offering. Father's Day, you give your father an acceptable offering. Some of you don't do research and you give gifts to people. No, you have to research it so that they will wear it. There are some people that don't wear ties. If you give them ties, what are they going to use it for? There are some people, the kind of shoe they wear, you cannot, you know, what are they going to do, do it for? The kind of shirt they wear and stuff like that. So you make a research. Hallelujah. And you realize that whatever he wears is very expensive. You can't afford it. And they give the money to him. You ask them and buy what he wants. And maybe he can tell you that the money you gave me, this is what I bought with it. So at least you know that when you see it on me, it is your credit. Glory to God. Amen. You don't go and buy something for the person you can never use. It is, it's not necessary. It must be acceptable. And it must be pleasing to God. What it means? It means that when you're blessing your spiritual father or your biological father or the father that brought you up, you don't do that to disadvantage other people or yourself. Let me break it down. So, for instance, in a church setting, you are into some bad deals, you are into some, some, some cocaine habits, you are into some, some, some credit card fraud, you are into some womanizers. So, you bring your offering to silence the pastor so that he will not be talking about your bad behavior. That is not pleasing to God. In a family setting, sometimes also we do that. And we bring offerings to our, our fathers or our mothers so they will disadvantage other children for us. So in other words, when the will is written, everything will be given us and not to anybody else because you are close and you're manipulating your mother, you're manipulating your father in order to get the best so other children will be disadvantaged. That is ungodly. Glory to God. Your giving must be pure. It must be a blessing. And it must increase your life. Two, show gratitude to your father because it's a biblical requirement. So number one, he doesn't have a need. But two, it's a biblical requirement. According to Galatians 6, says, because of time, let me read it. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word must share, should share all good things with their instructor. So when the man of God has given you instructions in the word and he's become well with you, he taught you how to buy the house. He taught you how to invest. He told you, don't do this, do that. He guided you into life. And now you have equity. Now things are happening. God is not saying, take all your money and go and give it to the man of God. But he said, give a representation. Take something and bless the person with it. So that you will be blessed. So you have continuity. You don't just say, pastor, thank you very much for the prayer you prayed for me. I got the job. No. You go to pastor, thank you very much, I got the job, and this is just a five pounds, or this is just a bottle of wine, this is just a this of that, just to say thank you. We know that in our culture. So doing it in the spiritual realm should not be a problem. Hallelujah. Some of you who have never done this, take this opportunity to do it. If you've never taken the time to actually thank your father, 
I'm talking about your biological father. If he's alive, you've never taken the time to thank him. Do that. If he's around, go to the house and do that. If he's travel, call him and send somebody on your behalf to him with a good offering or good something and speak to him and say, I have never, ever done this thing ever. But today, I want you to know, I appreciate you giving birth to me. I appreciate you taking me to school. I appreciate you doing all this to me. I appreciate you giving me away in marriage. I appreciate you uh, uh, counseling me for good marriage. I appreciate you coming to my wedding. I appreciate you doing this. I don't have enough. But what I want you to know is that this is a token of my appreciation for what you've done for me. You've got to learn to do that. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Father's Day, you've got to learn to do that. Amen. So, so he's saying in this test that you have to. It is a biblical command. Anybody that instructs you in the word, you are under moral obligation to do what? To also bless them. Then the last point is a show gratitude to your father. Because 1 Corinthians 9, 7 and 9 to 11 says that. Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its grapes? Who tends a flock and does not drink the milk? Verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it about oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us because whoever plows and threshes should be able to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? Hallelujah. So that is very clear. It's a who tends a flock. And does not drink of the milk. It's an abomination. Glory to God. It's an abomination. I remember years ago, I needed a, a passport. I needed to, to travel, but, but I couldn't go to uh, Petit France or something to, to, get it, the, to get it done. And, and not knowing one of uh, 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 our leaders then worked at that place and stuff like that. They said, oh, you don't need to come. I'll take the forms and I'll do everything on your behalf and blah, blah, blah. Uh, seriously, the next day or two days later, I had my British passport in my hands. Who tends the flock and doesn't drink the milk? Glory to Jesus. When well, you know people in high places, it works that way. I was preaching somewhere and I was late. This is back in Ghana. I was late and, 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 and the traffic, my goodness, I just called someone. I said, oh, dog, just wait, we'll, we'll take you through. Within how many minutes does a dispatch rider? I've never seen this in my life. From a place called Tema to a place called Kanishin, it takes about an hour plus to get there. Within 20 minutes, we had gotten there. If it didn't happen, I'll go and share the grace. If I will not go and share the grace, I'll go then lock the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God gives you connections. He gives you sons and acquaintances and people who open doors for you. He said, who? Who? That's what I was telling folk in the church. Whatever God has blessed you with, make the church feel it. Amen. You are an immigration officer, make the church feel it. Amen. Don't that you have to deport people, no. Amen. But advise them what they need to do to regularize their stay. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a bank manager, let the church feel it. Advise people how they cannot get into debt and stuff like that. You are a nurse, let the church feel it. I know you make me feel it anyway. But let the church feel it. Check their pressure. Hallelujah. You see somebody coming to church and it's working like that. Don't say hallelujah, praise God. Say, hey, hey, come, 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 come. come. Why are you working like that? I, I, I can see. Come, 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 come. Straight away, a nurse, you come to church. You've got pieces in your thing. You can just check your sugar level or something. I mean, let us feel your profession. One day we organized something like that. Somebody was walking around with a pressure of about 200. 200 over what? Yeah, yeah, he was just walking there. No, <laughs> walking there with 200. But for the grace bestowed on the nurses in the house, we were able to find it and now the person is free. Whatever God has blessed you with, let the church feel it. Glory to Jesus. You are barrister, let the church feel it. It's not everything you have to take money. Do some sort of pro bono work. Amen. Hallelujah. How many people have got immigration problems? Blind them up. Yes, advise them. Write letters for them. Help them. And God will bless you too. Amen. Glory to God. You're an accountant? Yes. Do the accounts for them. If you have to charge them small. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Amen. But this is the main point I want to leave you with. It's if we have some spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? What I'm doing now is sowing spiritual seed. But what should come back to me is not spiritual seed. I didn't say it. It's the Bible. What I'm doing now is I'm sowing spiritual seed. But I must get a, what, a material seed. And what I'm going to say next will be very controversial, but please don't listen to the judgment. Listen with a very open heart. The reason why he says that is that you cannot bless your apostle. I don't know why people do that. Biblically, he says that it is the greater that blesses the lesser. You can't bless your apostle. He has to bless you. You cannot bless God. So when we come to church and say, well, let's bless the name of the Lord. The translation was wrong. The word that was translated bless is the word elogio. And you know that word elogio, out of which you have eulogize. When you go to funerals and stuff like that, and eulogize the dead. So what he's saying actually is that you eulogize God. It was a translational fault. So when you come to God, you tell him that you who is the king of kings, the lord of lords, the lifter up of my head, the one when I was broken, you mended me, the one who took me from the mary clay and set my feet on the rock to stay. He said, when you come to him, you eulogize him. That is what we mean by bless. But because by definition, you can't bless God. He must bless you. And in the physical sphere, he puts a father over you so that through the father, you'll be blessed. That is why Isaac didn't bless uh, Abraham. It is Abraham that blessed Isaac. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I was made a canon, I didn't bless the archbishop. It's the archbishop that would bless me because he's of a higher authority in the kingdom than I am. So he must bless me. If I'm going to, the damn pastors, which we're going to be doing very soon, they are not going to, I am going to do what? Bless them and ordain them because I have the spiritual mandate and apostolic mandate. Order must be instilled in the church. Glory to God. So the text is saying that we sow spiritual things, but we also reap what? Material things. Pastor, God bless you. I just bought you a new car. God bless you. I built you a new house. God bless you. Remember, I'm not talking about 25 pounds and 20 pounds. God, (laughs) shall we rise? (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to just pray. We want to just bless the name of the Lord. So you can still use the word bless, but when you use it, bear in mind, it is not blessing us, but it's blessing us, eulogizing. It's blessing us, telling how good he is. It's blessing us, uh, just appreciating him. Glory to God. You have to understand the power of the Father. The father says the course of the children. Heritage is a father's. Blessings is a father's. Increase is a father's. There are several keys we have in the church. And I'm believing God that you have all the keys. That is what Jesus said. He said that what? I give you what? The keys. Not the key. Some of us, we have some. We don't have some. Some of us, we have the key to prayer. So all we do is pray, pray, pray. When it comes to thanksgiving, when it comes to giving, it comes to other things, we don't have the key. Some of us also, we give. We give, 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 give. We think our giving will solve every problem for us. And we don't pray. Some of us, we show kindness. And we show kindness. And that's why we show kindness to people and they hurt you. Because you don't have other keys that counteract the kindness you show. But you must be balanced. Turn to somebody, tell the person, be balanced. Hallelujah. The person that has authority, a full authority to this house is the person that has all the keys in his hands. In fact, that person is more powerful than I am in terms of access. Because there are times I have been here and I've not been able to go to anywhere because I'm waiting for the person that has the keys to come and open up. 
And I'm using that as an analogy. Hallelujah. I'm using that as an analogy. The person that has the keys to every part has the authority. When you come in here and you want to go in here, he can open for you. When you go in here, the same way Jesus was saying, that have the keys to the kingdom. When you have the keys to the kingdom, you have full gospel. You can enter any room, the vote, the prayer session, the altar session. You can go anywhere because there are mansions of greatness that come to you. But you have only two keys. Your life is one way. So some people, it's the only prayer they know. Everything prayer. Shall we give prayer? Shall we confess prayer? Shall we do the prayer? Shall we? Why? I want us to take two minutes to pray into this. And, and I was we praying, if your, your relationship with your father is not that good, like me, but I'm happy that we were buddies. I know my other siblings would be angry with me if I said it, but I will say it. I think between me and my father, we were buddies down every one of them before he died. We were buddies, 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 buddies. From outright hatred and anger to, and I received a blessing. And I told the church in Peckham that when he died, I saw him. He walked to me and he said to me, I said, you are alive. Let's go. He said, no, where I have to go, I have to go. But I just came to say, thank you for giving me a good barrier. Thank you. And it just, it's like a hologram and the whole thing disappeared. And I asked one elderly person and they gave me the interpretation of that. Brothers and sisters, if you are here and you don't have a good relationship with your father, I want to give you the opportunity. Whatever they have done. And again, I'm not saying that going to their sphere. Because some of their fathers, the more you go into their sphere, the more they offend you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But to honor them is important. If they're in a financial predicament, you can help them, help them. If they're living the life that, 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 that is destroying them, you can help them, help them. But you don't have to necessarily be in their space. Because God is not, that's not what the test is saying. To honor means that make sure they are okay. You don't have to call them every day. You don't have to even sit down and eat with them. Because if those things are going to cause problems. But you can do what is right. And you are saying to the pastor, I want you to stand with me in prayer. Because I don't have a very good relationship with my father. Because it's fathers, I'm just going to limit it to fathers. Next time we'll talk about mothers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So just walk to me, and I'm going to stand and pray with you, if there's anybody like that. But the, for the rest of us, let's just pray, and pray for our sons. If you have a son, pray for him. If you have a husband, pray for him. If you are pray diligently, because listen to me, you don't wait for your children to get to age 20, 30, before you start praying for them. Some of them, you need to pray for them now, so they can get correct wives. You don't want them to marry witches. You don't want to, them to marry women that will come and fight you. You know, some women, when your, your daughter marries certain women, your daughter, your son doesn't come home anymore. The devil is a liar. You must stand, you stay home with his wife. Uh, so, you, <laughs> the relationship is not that good. I feel in my spirit there are some people out there, but we, we're going to pray. I know time is fast, but we'll finish shortly. We're going to pray. We're going to declare right now. Especially everybody that's got a son. Pray for them. Especially you women. Women, pray for your sons. Declare in their lives. Amen. They will bring women that will befriend you. In the name of Jesus. I said they will bring what? Women that will befriend you. They will not bring any woman that will turn them away from you. I've seen that as a pastor. If I had time, I would tell you a lot of things. Mothers who had very good relationship with their sons. And the women were able to turn the man's head against their own mother against their own family. No, it's demonic. Where were you when the nappies were being cleaned up? Where were you when he was pooping on the mother and everything? Now you've just come with a loaf, a loaf, so you take him away. Where? Nasakar. But you, some of the women also, they are too tough. The mothers are too tough. They want the man to be eating their food. As soon as you give the man away in marriage, let the man eat their wife's food. Amen. Let's pray. 
just lift your voice. If you're here, you are saying that I, 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 I have a problem. The relationship with my father is not that good. And especially he's alive. I want you to come to the altar and stand with him in prayer. But for the rest of us, pray for the man in your life. Pray. Is your husband pray for? Is your son, especially your son, that even as he grows, he will fall in love with the right women. Hallelujah. And eventually marry the right person. Hallelujah. Because if you marry the wrong person, you are doomed. Glory to Jesus. You also pray and declare right now for your husband, your boyfriend, your, your, your uncle, any man in your life. Lift them up in prayer. Shall we pray for the next few minutes? Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Let me release a fatherly blessing over the house for this time. And I'm releasing a, a similar blessing that Isaac declared right now in the house. So that for fathers, they may that father blessing follow you in what you do in Jesus' name. May the God of heavens give you due and the earth riches be your portion. An abundance of grain be your portion. A new wine be your portion. May nations serve you and peoples bow down before you. Be Lord over your brothers. And may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed. And those who bless you be blessed. Increase and never decrease. Possess nations. May wealth, honor, long life, and ability to enjoy long life be your portion. I decree might and power. Your going now be blessed. And your coming in be blessed. Whatever your hand touches, may it be blessed. I decree by the apostolic that you will never lack in the good thing. In the name of Jesus, may the river that flows from the sanctuary flow over your life. Oh, you will smile and smile again you will sing and sing again I stand here in the power of the Lord God and I declare by the apostolic mandate of my life that you will experience goodness and mercy, it will follow you all the days of your life may money follow you good marriage follow you favor follow you, good relationships follow you, fans follow you, wealth follow you every good thing follow you may creation clap its hands when you emerge in the name of Jesus and the trappings of the enemy over your life will break it in the name of Jesus only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked I declare today on Father's Day may you be all that God has called you to be in this ministry you will prosper in this ministry you will make it may your business prosper may your children prosper may everything that concerns you prosper I decree and declare the blessings of fast track everything you've been waiting on for too long may it fast track this week you will receive apostolic mandate to fast track stuff tomorrow by this time you will give a testimony tomorrow by this time you will say God what did I do to deserve this tomorrow by this time you will sing and sing again tomorrow by this time you will say Lord God go in that strength and go in the power in Jesus name amen our mission is raising overcomers setting the captives free freedom center international is here to support you in every step that you take with the word of god as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness and we hope you've been blessed by today's message Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 277 8700. You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org and remember there is progress in freedom.